Hello everyone, I'm Ryan McDonald, uh, executive producer here at GameSpot Live, and uh, joining me, Alex Navarro, uh, Ricardo Torres, and uh, as many of the GameSpot staffers we could fit behind the couch, to be honest. Um, obviously, we wanted to start today's on the spot off a little different than we had in the past, the recent events, and uh, what happened last week in regards to our longtime friend and colleague, Jeff Gerstmann, being dismissed. Um, you know, it's been really hard on us, and the... Uh, you know, the response obviously has been tremendously immense and it's been on both sides. It's been, uh, you know, it's nice to see that everybody speaks up and has been kind of pulling for us. Uh, on the other hand, it's been hard obviously seeing, you know, GameSpot sucks written 100,000 times in forums and stuff. So obviously wanted to address this and uh, talk to you guys today. Jeff was a personal friend to pretty much everybody. So it was really, really hard that it happened uh, the way it did. But you've seen, you know, the news story you put up. Hopefully you've listened to the podcast that we honestly said everything that we could and everything that we, you know, I think in a lot of ways wanted. Um, Jeff's probably in Vegas right now, actually, so <laughs> Jeff's doing better than all of us. Uh, but yeah, we really wanted to say that we, uh, we love and miss Jeff and give him, honestly, the proper send-off that he deserves. So that's what today's show is all about. And obviously, you can see it's hard for me personally. Um, anything you want to add, Alex? No, I, th I think you pretty much summed it up. You know, it's been a real... It's been a hell of a week, and uh, it's, it's been really rough just kind of seeing how this whole thing has just continued to spiral and spiral, and, you know, it, we're, we're doing the best we possibly can to just kind of pull together and, you know, keep things going as they have been, and, you know, it's, it's been emotional, is what it's been. The, uh, Ricardo Torres, uh, before I, I, I go to you, uh, Ryan Davis wanted to be here today. Unfortunately, he is sick. So uh, Homer Barr is also out, unfortunately. Um, but uh, Ricardo, anything you'd like to add before we kick it to the video that we made for Jeff? Good. Thank you. Yeah. So with the, uh, you know, uh, not much to say other than, you know, we miss you, Jeff, and uh, we, we know you're doing good. So, you know, have fun in Vegas. And uh, from all of us here and all of you watching out there, you know, we're, uh, we're not through this just quite yet, but hopefully this message today, what we've done with the podcast and the information we've given out in the news story will go a long ways to answering your questions and hopefully uh, letting you know that we're still here and we're still going to be giving you the content that you've come and uh, that you've come to expect from GameSpot over the last 11 years. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and uh, say goodbye to Jeff the way we wish and that we could have done already. So please roll the video. Jeff, you ready? Uh, Jeff, uh, come on, let's go. Uh, no, later, we gotta do a show. Come on, out, drop, spit it. Taco experience is, okay, I like a lot of choices when it comes to, you know, how I live my life, options. And Del Taco's menu is all about options. So you can get a burrito, you can get a quesadilla, you can get kind of the whole standard Taco Bell menu. But then they also have this whole kind of shoddily put together hamburger menu too. So you can get not so good french fries and kind of a dry hamburger, but it's there for you. And then they have all kinds of other wild crazy stuff like dulce de leche shakes. Let's Game Spot. Hello and welcome to the ever evolving Let's Game Spot. I'm your host Jeff Gersman. You heard me right, I said evolving. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I don't know. Rumble Racing is EA's PlayStation 2 follow-up to NASCAR Rumble, which is the PlayStation 1 racing game they released last year. It's, uh, it doesn't really fall into the sports genre like you would think a NASCAR game would. Uh, yeah. Turn it up. Getting crazy on the mic, you is the Jeff with the G. And I already told you not to mess with me. But you better not think to test my posse from the L E T S G E M E S P O T. We're coming for you, don't take it lightly. You dinosaurs are done, fool, you can't outright me. Time to drop a little knowledge for you all get clowned. Give me the game scores, I'll break it on down. The 10 score is perfect, so it's infinitely rare. And if a game scores nine, you know it's way up there. We can set up eight, boy, you know it's great. But that don't mean that all the sevens are too 
week to rate. Six games have problems, but they might be fun. If a game gets a five, you might want to run. When the score hits four or lower, then you know it's hella lame. Hey, yo, don't play this game. Uh. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. That's the thing. Hey, I'm Jeff Gersman. We're here at the uh, Hellman Compound. Here with my uh, faithful man, servant Chris. This is where we live. Out here in the middle of nowhere. Out the sticks. And, uh, it's nice out here. You know, it's uh, far away from everything. You gotta do game reviews. That isolation sometimes exactly what you need. Check out our game space. Work, Jeff. Baby Ruth. They put Counter Strike in the Pac Man arcade. There's a bunch of PCs in the world famous Pac Man arcade in Pasadena, California. They are urinating on Nolan Bushnell's grave, and he is not even dead. Hello, do you have a finished copy of your game that's out next week? I want to get a review schedule. <clears throat> Get a, get a, get, get, get a review schedule. Released Grand Theft Auto 3 from the PlayStation 2, and uh, from what we've played of it, it's uh, going to be one of the best games to come out this year for the PlayStation 2. For more information, consult our... Header guy. Head. Six. 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 Six point eight six. <laughs> that was obviously a little bit at uh a little bit of a look at the great Jeff Gersman, and uh, I mean that thing could have been like about a billion D hours long with all the stuff that we've done over the years. But, a bajillion uh, D even. Yes, sir. But uh, but there's some good stuff in there. So yeah. uh, thanks to David Tool for cutting that together. And uh, yeah, so should we get on with the uh, on the spot action? Let's do a show. Let's do a show. Let's do a show. Jeff would want us to do a show. I think so too. Totally. So uh, I think we're ready and standing by with our good man, Brian Eckberg, who is over at the uh, standing set. Brian, you've got a cool PC game with some guests over there. What, can you tell us more? Oh, I think they're going to be working on some, some technical stuff over there, maybe getting the PC demo set up. Well, I know what they've got over there, so we're going to talk about it before they get to it. All right, yeah, let's do it. Uh, they've got Uni Universe at War for the PC. Yeah. Have you heard of this game, sir? Uh, I have. I understand that there is strategy involved. There is. And it's in uh, there's the universe. And it's at war? It's at war. And uh, there was, uh, I think there was a really funny tagline that actually talked about our uh, forms actually being something of a universe at war at the moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we're waiting for those guys to get all set up over there. I think they're all ready. So, Brian Eckberg, please uh, take it away, sir. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Uh, I'm joined by a couple of fine fellows from uh, Sega. We've got Steve Frost and Denny Chu. And we're, of course, like you said, looking at Universe at War uh, and real-time strategy game, guys. Um, it's almost out. It's almost here, right? Yeah, we're, we're coming out on Monday. Wow. Yeah, so we're right around the corner. A lot of work have, has gone into this game, though, and uh, it, it looks amazing. We're looking at it right now. Give me a high-level overview of where this game's at and, and what, it's, what it's all about. Well, what it's all about, um, you're looking at three factions here. Well, actually on screen right now, you've got the Novus, which is kind of like the uh, iPodish looking uh, uh, faction on top right here. And they're fighting against the hierarchy right now. And those are the, you know, the huge red walkers that you're, mm -hmm. that you're seeing on screen. Uh, besides these two guys, you, we've actually got a third faction called the Masari. And they're kind of like a godlike uh, uh, faction where, you know, the myth mythology behind them is kind of like, you know, were they the ancient astronauts that came to Earth and helped, you know, the Egyptians build pyramids and mm -hmm. stuff like that? And were they the ancient Atlanteans, you know? So that's their mythology. Okay, I thought that was the predators that built the, the pyramids. <laughs> no? Okay. Not well, in our game. <laughs> so, um, three races, three distinct ways of playing the game. That's what really stood out to me about this game straight away is just how different 
uh, each of the different each of the three races are. Very distinct. I mean, uh, the guys at Petroglyph did a great job of creating really distinct factions that, even though they have different play styles, the balancing in the game still allows for each uh, faction to, you know, ha have an advantage or disadvantage depending on how you're patching or leveling up your, your tech trees and, and whatnot in the game. So, I mean, it, it's I almost equate it to like a lion fighting a fish fighting, you know, a gorilla. I right. mean, they're totally different species, but when you put them in, in the tank together, they, they might be able to brawl it out kind of, you know, right. kind of the idea. So, Steve, from, uh, from your point of view, um, these different play styles, it, is it I want to pick the race that suits the way I play the game, or can they be adapted to how you want to play, or, or what's, it, the, what's the approach here? It's sort of a mixture of both, really. I mean, we have sort of the three distinct sides uh, for with three different styles of play, as you mentioned. Um, we've got the hierarchy, which are these big walkers. Uh, they have uh, their base, they carry it with them. They don't really have a stationary base, so wherever you go, your base goes. Mm -hmm. And that sort of caters to people who just like to kind of go out explore. They don't necessarily like to manage bases very much. Uh, they just want to go out into the action and to the thick, thick of things. Uh, the novice here are sort of like um, a network. They're, they're sentient uh, computers, basically. They kind of go around the map building a network of these uh, networks that you see right here that they can travel through, basically at the speed of light. Um, so they're kind of like jump into a situation, attack, and then get out of there quickly. So mm -hmm. they can quickly expand across the given map and then uh, retreat at a moment's notice. Uh, the third group, the Masari, which you aren't seeing today, but they're more the traditional RTS guys. They have a base that they need to protect, and it's more so the, the sort of guys that you'd normally see in typical RTS games out there. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, you build your units, you really protect your base. If your base is destroyed, then you're kind of done with for the day. Right. Um, but the main thing that we're trying to stress in this game, along with the three differences between the sides, is the ability to adjust your tactics on the fly. Mm. So we have numerous ways of doing it. One way is each side has research trees here um, that you see three banks, and you can have six enabled at any given time. Okay. Um, if you're going down a particular path that you think is effective, but you come across an, an opponent says like, you know what, this path that I've taken doesn't really work properly, I can quickly negate out of it and start building up another path. Just that so, quick. Just yeah. that quick. Right. And the other way, especially with the Novus here, since they're sentient computers, they have a patching system. So as you're progressing through the game, these patches become available uh, with different abilities, some like speed up production of units, some reduce cost of units, mm -hmm. some protect you from radiation and such. And I can just quickly on the fly like switch to research another one just like that. So you have to research a patch before it's available to you. Exactly. Once, it's available, to, exactly. once it's available, you can switch in and out as you, as you exactly. please. Exactly, exactly. Um, some of this stuff, as far as the research trees, there's a research cost involved with it. But once you get rid of one, you get the cost back. So okay. it's almost instantaneous. It just takes the time to research it. And the hierarchy, on the other, uh, on the other hand, is a completely different different beast, so to speak. Exactly. I mean, you see the wreckage of one right here, but basically these walkers, they have hard points on them that can be customized. So if you're an offensive player, you want to form troops, you can add uh, hard points that allow you for troop creation. Mm -hmm. um, but if you go into the thick of things and you're being destroyed like this walker was just by my troops here, uh, you can switch and have your hard points modified to shields. Mm -hmm. And you can do that on the fly. It takes a little while to transition, but it allows you to modify your options and your abilities on the fly as you're moving through the map. What the guys at Petroglyph wanted really to do with that system is um, kind of make games longer in a way. It's not like uh, older RTSs where, you know, if you see your enemy and you see what they've researched and whatnot, you feel like, oh my god, I've gone down the wrong tech tree, I can't really reverse any of that, mm -hmm. I'm going to quit out. We, d we wanted to eliminate that. So with the uh, tactical dynamics, you can actually re-engineer what you've done before to better attack your opponent. Okay. Do all of the, the different races have the exact same amount of, of, of weapons and uh, character classes and heroes and things like that? It varies. Um, it depends, actually. Like, for example, the Masari, the third race, they actually have fewer units, but their units have different abilities. They have a light and a dark mode, mm -hmm. and uh, you can switch between them. So they may have fewer units, but their individual units have uh, a larger number of abilities. Okay. They can go from defensive to offensive, from range to melee, um, more defensive to quicker attacks. Um, in the case of of the novice, what we can kind of do with them is a lot of the uh, units have special abilities, like all of them have special abilities. Um, some of them even have the ability to switch from, for example, an assault sort of situation to form shields uh, that are stationary. So again, going from offensive to defensive um, as, they, as they progress along. 
So even within the same race, it sounds like there's some flexibility. If you want to play the Masari one way uh, or go down another path, you can you can do so. Two people playing the same race can even have some variation. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like this Sonic Resonator right here, he's in a stationary mode, so he'll take out and damage anything in the surrounding area. I can quickly switch him to a sort of a mobile focus B mode, and now I can focus on a singular target, which is more powerful, but I'm focused on a singular target. And again, on the fly, I can switch back to a stationary mode that covers a larger area if I'm surrounded by units. And that's part of the fun in that, you know, you can play against somebody that's playing, you know, let's just say you're playing hierarchy, you can play somebody else that's playing hierarchy, and right. it's totally different styles. Right. So tell me about multiplayer then, that, that's a perfect segue. Um, how does multiplayer work in the game, and, and what are our options when we dive into it? Uh, you're, well, like traditional RTSs, you've got like skirmish modes that you can set up. Mm -hmm. uh, there's o also an overarching global mode that you can access in the game, where you'll be going, uh, there's, you have a globe, and then there's different territories that you can hold within the globe, and you challenge other players for that territory. So let's just say, you know, we're fighting for, you know, the southwestern U.S., and I need that territory, and so do you. So we both try to conquer that, uh, um, that territory, so we'll get matched up in a, in, a, uh, in a game, and whoever wins gets that territory on their globe. Cool. Awesome. All right. Uh, so we, I saw one of the big attacks earlier. It was like a black hole attack. Is yeah. that one of the more devastating attacks in the game? And, and what are the kind of options for attacks to be? Yeah, having? every side of superpower, you can see the black hole right here, which basically sucks in everything around it, um, including resources. So not only is this is like sort of an offensive weapon where you can wipe out an opponent, but let's say you're you're trying to destroy resources that an opponent might want. You can also activate this uh, super weapon and just wipe out buildings and, and other territories around so they can't get these resources that they need to build units. So it's, it's a lot of mixture, like everything is an offensive, defensive sort of mix. And you kind of have to think about it by going in and saying, like, you know what, I'm not locked to a specific thing for any ability or any unit. I have multiple options and I can choose the best way to do this on the fly during a battle in the middle of a game. Uh, tell me about the single player game. Uh, how does it progress, teach you through, uh, take you through the three different races? I understand there are humans in this game. They just mm -hmm. play a very small, a sort of smaller role to these three alien races. Um, that's correct, yeah. Um, normally in a typical RTS you'd expect that the third race would be uh, the humans, but actually when it starts out you do play as the uh, human military uh, trying to sort of rescue the president, but you quickly find out that the firepower of these invading aliens is just too strong for you, and, and quickly the, uh, the humans kind of get swept by the wayside, protected by the, these novice, um, just from the standpoint that their weapons just aren't powerful enough. There's actually a, quite a deep fiction behind the game. Um, the hierarchy pretty much are going through the galaxy and just harvesting different planets. They just want resources to fuel their war machine. The Novus uh, are pretty much on their tails traveling through the galaxy trying to stop them from you know, destroying civilizations and whatnot. And then the Masari have actually been lying dormant on Earth and are awakened by the hierarchy's arrival. So it, it all, they all, all three races tie together in, in a really cool way. Cool. Well, the name of the game is uh, Universe at War. Earth Assault. Uh, Earth Assault. Uh -huh. Sorry about that. The game yeah. is out on PC on Monday, and I understand that an Xbox 360 version is in the works. Yes, at some point. there's That's an good. Xbox 360 version uh, coming Q1 next year. Uh, we're actually going to be the first, I believe, uh, third-party yep. uh, title that's going to be interoperable between ah. PC and 360. Cool. So that's going to be very cool. Yeah, we definitely have some pri surprises for 360 as well, and we'll talk about that later, obviously. But we got some good stuff. In the yeah, list. and uh, I mean, with the launch of the the uh, the game this weekend, we've actually got a couple of events going on. Uh, if you've got an iGames uh, uh, venue near your town or in your city, go to the iGames Tournament Center because we've got the uh, game running there this weekend to go along with the launch. And then next week, uh, on the 14th and 16th, we've got uh, uh, Microsoft running a play and win tournament for us as well. And there's prizes you can win hourly. There's like three grand prizes. Um, and you actually get to play the uh, developers during that weekend as well. So look out for them online. Cool. A lot of good stuff going out for the game. Uh, we look forward to playing it uh, next week. Guys, Steve, uh, Danny, thanks for coming by. Appreciate you having Thank you. Appreciate you having, having you here. And uh, Ryan uh, McDonald, we got more games to look at? Uh, yes, sir. We're, next, we are joined by a trio of people. Alex Navarro being the first. Hey, Mr. Al Alex Navarro. Good I'll to see you again. Shake your hand again. And, uh, <laughs> of course, our good friend from COVID. We've got Jarek. Hey, what's up, Jarek? How you doing? And Tina down there. Hey, how you doing? Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
It's good to, good to have you guys here. And you guys are, are all here to check out Samurai Wars Katana. Absolutely. Indeed we are. So I'll let you guys take it away. All right, so uh, this is the first time the Samurai Warriors franchise has been on the Wii. What is this game all about? Well, um, Koei's back to doing what it does best, bringing historical action. Uh, and we're bringing one of our key franchises, Samurai Warriors, to the Wii. Again, it's the first time. Uh, and uh, originally when we thought about bringing this game over to the console, we thought about doing a third-person uh, action game. You know, very traditional in, in the Samurai Warriors style, but the only way we could truly feel like, uh, you know, of, of feeling as if you were a samurai or a ninja fighting was to make it a first-person uh, adventure. So um, actually, you know, Tina's going to jump to the gameplay. Yeah, and let's then get right in here. Um, so we, uh, we spent a lot of time balancing the controls out. Uh, you, you'll notice that the normal attacks, she'll, use, uh, she'll do those by pressing the A button. Um, and with the charge attacks, these more powerful attacks have gesture-specific uh, moves for each weapon. And for the ultimate Muso attack, it's, she'll like, quickly shake the nunchuck and then do a, uh, a similar gesture. Uh, part of the reason is that when we were originally developing the title, we, we focused on a lot of uh, mostly gesture uh, control, but uh, our entire test team was just getting worn out. <laughs> so uh, the team did a really good job of balancing the gameplay. So here what we're looking at, um, Tina's uh, in the first stage. She's at the Battle of Okehazama. And you don't actually play as one of the Samurai Warriors. You, you play as your own character, and uh, the Samurai Warriors characters act as your guides throughout the adventure. Uh, what she's doing right now, you'll see that there's, uh, that there's a target on the, on the characters that change from blue to red. When, it, when it's blue, the character is kind of out of range. Uh, but when they turn red, they're in range. But you do have the advantage of, of having two different weapons. What, what Tina's doing right now is, is a Musou attack. Um, she just cut a whole bunch of dudes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so th this guy's out of range, so she has a, a, a bow and arrow that she can use to target the, uh, the characters in the distance. Sort of interesting seeing the, the grunt enemies up close like this, because you're so used to just cutting, like, you know, cutting through them in wide swaths. You know, now you're kind of up, up close and personal with them. You kind of feel bad for stabbing all these peasants. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> and, and in, in later stages, too, you're, you're going to be exploring like, dark caves, Ninjas will be popping up from the side, you know, from the top of the screen, coming at you from all directions. So you really have to kind of be aware of, uh, of your surroundings in the game. Now, will you be engaging in battle with the samurai warriors, like the people that you know you that you remember from the previous games? Like, are they sort of in there as like people you fight? Absolutely, they they play a big role in the game, um, uh, not just as guides, but as as boss characters as well. And defeating um, specific characters will will give you new weapons or new power ups. And um, as far as like just the scenarios, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I assume that you can probably expect a lot of the same sort of you know battle scenarios from the previous games. Like, you know, is there going to be a whole lot of you know Takeda Oda style like you know the good back and forth stuff, or like yeah. just the, you know a lot of the battle scenarios from the previous games kind of in, in put into into practice here? Yeah, the, uh, the those that are fans of the Samurai Warriors will re really appreciate like the history, but we we've we've taken the history and using that as the, as the source material. Uh, but all the all the well-known battles that you know you've seen in Samurai Warriors will will take place here, uh, and we've actually done is ex really expand upon the gameplay. There's three different game modes. There's a versus mode for two players. Uh, there is a, a, a trial mode, which combines almost like kind of like brain training kind of uh, activities, and there's your main Muso mode, which has about like 96 different stages, and just in the Muso mode alone, there's about 30 hours of gameplay. Cool. Uh, so. Uh, we're going to actually jump to another stage now, uh, and this is another well-known battle. You know, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's the uh, uh, Battle of uh, Hanoji Temple, mm -hmm. and this is this is the, uh, to kind of bring a little history into it. This is where uh, Oda Nobunaga um, was assassinated before, before he could unite Japan. Ah, so <laughs> a little, little, his, little All trivia right. for those for the for those back home. Uh, so in this stage, um, uh, what I like about this stage is it shows that. Uh, it's a kind of a free roaming, you know, like the first day was on rails, but we, we've seen a mix of gameplay here. Um, and in this stage, Tina's going to use, uh, she's going to use the cannon uh, and the spear. So, and there are actually eight different weapons to choose from, so don't let the katana name fool you. In, in plenty of variety ways. Yeah, there. Plenty, of, plenty of variety. So in this stage, what, what her main goal is, is uh, she has to rescue some people from a burning building. Ah. Uh, and it's the uh, Hanoji Temple. Now, I have a question for you yes. guys. I'm asking, like, uh -huh. you guys were talking about the beginning, you know, a lot of the simpler enemies she's 
pushing the A button to you know stab or slash. Yeah. If I wanted to, could I change the control screen so I was like stabbing and slashing like with the Wii mode every time? Or uh, you 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 can't. Well, you you can't reconfigure the controls where you where you're not pressing the A button, but you can use the charge attacks you know as, as many times as you like, which has you know very gesture specific moves like uh, for. Yeah, it uh, seemed like a fair fight. Cannon, <laughs> that one dude, was like right in the face. <laughs> you know, for for she's using a spear now, so you can use a lot of stabbing movements. Uh -huh. um, and actually, uh, with before with the sword, depending on how you swung the sword, you could toss characters in the air. So there's, uh, they really did a good job. The development team uh, at Omega Force did a good job of really kind of tailoring the movements and the capabilities of each of the weapons and making them very unique. So the gestures can change depending on what type of weapon you're using when you're when you're doing those special attacks and such. Exactly, okay. exactly. So there's, with the spear you have a thrusting movement. Uh, for, for the other weapons there's like a boomerang where you have to kind of use a tossing Do movement. A uh, there's even like a, a bladed yo-yo for, for oh, some uh, uh, crazy variety in there. So what, what, she's, what she's doing right now, she's going th uh, through uh, Hanoji Temple and she's, she's looking for uh, the wife of a, a, a security officer, um, but we can also use the weapons to uh, tear down, kind of like fi find some hi uh, hidden passages gotcha. along the way. So, like, with, mm -hmm. like it says, action roam right there on the little on the little uh, analog stick. She can pretty much go anywhere she would like. Absolutely, oh. absolutely. Okay. But there are, so basically some levels are kind of on rails and just take you through a very specific, you know, pattern, whereas here you can kind of explore and go wherever you need to go and eventually find this lady and stop her from burning alive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's, there's, in fact, you know, like, we've, we've uh, really kind of, like, broken up the gameplay to give them, the, the players, a lot of variety along with the battles. Uh, there's stages where you'll be, again, like, riding on horseback or, or wandering through mazes or searching the battlefields for treasure. So, it, it, it's, it, again, it's taking, you know, this, this, the Samurai Warriors universe uh, and gameplay and, and really kind of like making it uh, you know tailor-made for our fans and also kind of creating a broader appeal for those that are you know we owners that are buying a console for the first time. Gotcha. The, uh, you guys mind? They, they got some questions over here. You guys mind taking some questions from the audience? Absolutely. absolutely. Brian, Brian Eckberg, you got some business over there? Yeah, uh, Mark Costa from London wants to know is it possible to adjust the sensitivity of the sword slashes and how sensitive is it on the default level? Uh, adjust, adjusting the, the sensitivity of the controls. Well, there, there's actually different weapons, uh, or uh, different weapons within like the katan. There's different um, uh, power-ups. You can take your weapon to the forge and customize it uh, to increase uh, certain attributes of like attacking or muso attacks, or, or making it more more of a defensive weapon. Uh, and then you can find you can find power-ups on the battlefield. Uh, but you can also uh, use gold that you've earned through battle to, you know, customize and adjust your weapon. The katana uh, also, uh, again, each weapon has different kind of movements to it, and we, you know, it explains in the manual all the different techniques that you can use to like toss characters in the air, sweep several characters at once, you know, stab them directly. And it so, seems like just uh, from watching her play, like you know, it, it's it's responding the way it's supposed to when she, you know she's she's stabbing dudes. So you know when she stabs, someone dies, yeah. and that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's what's yeah. supposed to happen, uh -huh. so uh -huh. it looks like it works pretty uh -huh. well. Mr. Eckberg, I think we got time for one more question. You got another one for us? Yeah, I sure do. Uh, Parker Wolford from Concord, California wants to know about uh, if there's any multiplayer in the game. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what? Let's, 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 let's jump into that yeah, real, real quick here, just to show people uh -huh. what it looks like. You guys uh -huh. get to stab each other? I think, I think, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about stabbing a lady, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, there's, there's a multiplayer mode. Um, it's only for two people, and you get to choose a long-range weapon and a short-range weapon, and we'll go into that right now. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, so here I am. I'll do that one. Yeah. That dude was fierce. Yeah. I like I like hammer. Okay, yeah, go ahead and uh -huh. pick the hammer. <laughs> is, is the blades the? Uh, that's our. Uh, that's the yo-yo. Yo-yo. Yeah. 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 Business. Yeah, I need a ranged weapon right now. Uh -huh. I'll go with the bow. Okay. And when you do the hammer, you'll you'll hold the A button down and then use a, like a hammering kind of a motion. Mm -hmm. And then to do that like seems intuitive. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then for like the muso attack, you'll you'll just shake your nut. When when the muso gauge fills up, you'll you gotta you gotta run. So running, running. Uh, it's the sure. Okay. Oh. Uh, okay. And then you start running again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and right now it shows that you're ahead. I got it now. I got to stab some dudes. Twenty yeah. dudes. Start hammering them. The hammer is slower, but when you're equipped with the hammer, 
Uh, it does prevent you from getting stunned by other enemies. And you can clear more than one weapon, more than one uh, enemy at a time. So. Now that your Muso Gage is full, you can shake your nunchuck and then start hammering. There you go. Oh damn. Oh dip. That's some hammering. That's some dudes slashing. just got hammered in uh, the face. That was like all kinds of people dropping. Well, okay. I... Oh jeez. Z two Z V. Z. All right, there we go. There was five seconds left supposedly, or now it's been extended. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm I got I got all this stabbing I got to do. Yeah. There's running through spikes, the doors closing. Oh, no damn, love, spikes Dr. are Jones. killing me right you can, now. You can use the Z button to stop. But while you're doing that, um, the, on the direction pad, there are different items that you can use to uh, kind of like distract your enemy. You can slow them down with like broken sandals. There or... are so many spikes <laughs> here, man. <laughs> you got to turn the crank. Let's go turn the crank. Yeah. She's the, the one turning the crank. Right. I'm just yeah. getting stabbed yeah. over and over again <laughs> on these damn walls. <laughs> Run! I, yes! Run. I will get to the chamber! Oh. Oh. This right. hurts a yeah. lot. <laughs> I, I will spare you, Mr. Varro. They're telling Thank me you. we are moving on. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so yeah. There you go. Samurai That's Warriors Samurai Katana. Warriors. When's, uh, when's it due out? Uh, January 15th, 2008. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thanks so much for coming by. Thanks for having us. Appreciate All right. It. Okay. You, uh, you got another game that Brian Eckberg is going to be showing well, us. Well, I don't have another game, but oh, we yeah, got yeah. another we game. We got another game. Yes, yeah, true. We the team. <laughs> yes. Brian Eckberg, what kind of craziness you got over there? Uh, we, the team, have uh, schizoid. Hey, I brought the game. All right. yeah. Brad is here, of course. Brad Shoemaker's here, and we're going to take a look at an Xbox 360 game. Yep. Uh, schizoid. schizoid. The subtitle is two, what is it, two minds, one goal. One goal, yes. Uh, so it's an Sounds Xbox... like one of my last relationships. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand that. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's an Xbox Live Arcade game. Uh, it's been made by Torpex, which is a developer up in Bellevue, Washington. Okay. Uh, it's notable because it's the first XNA game to make it to Live Arcade. Ah. Uh, XNA yeah. was that common development platform that Microsoft put out. Lots you make, you know, Windows and 360 games kind of in parallel. So first one of those to be made with XNA. Yeah, and, and uh, proof that XNA games don't have to look like dog crap. This yeah, game looks awesome, Yeah, it looks man. really sweet. And, yeah. uh, it is, as you said, it's a co-op focused game. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to need the assistance of my lovely host here to help me play it. All right. So we're going to jump right on in here. Right. So well. it's kind of like uh, we were playing it earlier, and it reminds me of like a cross between like Flow and like Pac-Man and, and like there's some geometry wars geometry in there. Wars and in some there and we were talking yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's all kinds of influences here. So let's just jump on in so people can see how it works. So you've so, got. It's two-player, like I said. You've got two ships, one of each color, uh -huh. and the idea is essentially that you kill enemies of the same color by running into them. Uh, but and of course, if you, if you run into the opposite color, you die. You're, you're done for. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. So uh, we just started a new game. So the, the first few levels are real rudimentary here. Whoa! <laughs> Although I'm already getting the business, but uh, uh, you can see, you know, basically you're just kind of working together to clear out the different colors of enemies. Right. Uh, and there's a lot more to it than that. It gets more complicated as you progress. Yeah, it ramps uh, up pretty quick, we yeah. found. And as you can see, these levels just fly by, so we're, uh, we should make some pretty good progress here. And uh, yeah. Uh, now, whoa, come here. These are no. tough to catch, these little... Oh, Ooh, see, I died. You just ate it. Now, you'll, you'll see when you die, you respawn right on top of your teammates. Right. So that, that's usually useful for strategic purposes. Um, kind of similar to Geometry Wars, the different kind of enemies have different behavioral patterns. So, like these star guys, whoa! You can see, like, they'll come after the other colored guy, but then they'll also flee directly from the same colored guy. Right, so, so we kind of lured him in. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of cases where you need to kind of, like, leapfrog back and forth to drag enemies around and all that kind of thing. And I, I, one of the things I noticed right away about this game was that it's, like, the, the field of view scales really nice yeah, and really it does, smooth. Yeah, it does. I mean, you can see these are pretty big levels. Whoa, whoa, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't worry, I'm doing all the dying. Ah! <laughs> um, yeah, uh, real big levels, and I'm going to die. Um, you can pretty much go to the opposite ends of the levels, ah. and uh, oh, I'm so dead. No, I got and it'll, you. It'll, it'll scale all the way out. Yeah, like you can see these star guys are basically as fast as you are. So yeah, you're going to have to bring it back like, towards me. You actually, whoa, cut them off, cut them off. There you go. Ah. See, see, that's what you got to do, that kind of stuff. So. And then once they get cut off there, they're sort of stranded. Yeah, yeah, these, these blue dudes are all bunched up here. So I'm going to try to bring this back to you because yeah. he's chasing me. You cut him off right there. Bam. All right, so there we go. Um, that was level four. There are definitely over 100 levels. I think it's like 120, something like that. So, and they get longer and more complicated as you go. And it should be noted that there's a lot of different kinds of, of 
of these little creatures that have different properties. Oh yeah, right? yeah. There's still several more enemy types that have yet to be introduced here. And these are interesting because they sort of evolve as as you go, right? Yeah, these guys will. Uh, this might happen before we finish this, or maybe not. But these guys will evolve into an indestructible form. That one right there just did that. And and, and it's interesting because even though they evolve. If all of these evolve, it's the level over, yeah, right? Yeah, so I mean, once you that, can't that's kill a, anything else. That's yeah. a legitimate strategy. Yeah, totally. Um, I believe in a level or two, we're going to see some uh, some breeders, which are these dudes that just go around dropping eggs everywhere. So. And you got to take care of those guys. Yeah, quick. you, you want to cut those guys off at the source as fast as you can because it gets real hectic if you let them lay, you know, 10 billion eggs everywhere. <laughs> we, we found that out earlier. Yeah, whoa. Oh. All right. Got it. I think those those guys might be on this next level here. Uh, there's a number of power-ups in the game too. I, right. I hope we have time to get to some of them because they're pretty cool. But uh, you know, you can increase your ship's speed. Uh, there's a smart bomb. And so uh, these are like eggs, right here. Yeah, these are the yeah. eggs. I think on the next level, you'll actually see the breeders that drop these things, and that can get pretty hairy. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. oh, bad news, bad news. Yeah, it definitely takes some uh, communication. Yeah, here. yeah, totally. Oh, um, oh. Obviously, we're playing local co-op here. It is going to have full uh, internet support, and you know, you'll be able to play. Sure, oh, oh. but, but just uh, just two players. Yeah, right? yeah, it's just two player over uh, Xbox Live. So, uh, And then the most mind-bending aspect of this game that you could imagine is that uh, hopefully we'll unlock. Oh, there it is. Uber Schizoid mode is what I was going to talk about. Okay. Uh, Basically, so you can play co-op like we're doing. Uh, you can play one player with the computer controlling the other ship, but you can also play Uber Schizoid where you're actually controlling each of these ships with one of the sticks on the controller, and it will split your brain <laughs> in half. And we're actually going to, hopefully if we have enough time, we're going to watch yeah, you split your yeah, brain I'll, in I'll, half. I'll jump into a game real quick. And, and talk you can, at the same you time. You can see how miserably I fail at that. I, I still haven't mastered the whole walking and chewing gum thing. Yeah. So. Well... Do you know when this game's coming out? Uh, it's early next year. I think they are still sort of hammering out a, oh god. Oh boy. Uh, a, a firm release ah. date. You'll notice that we, even though we've died a lot, oh my god, a, a lot. lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you do accrue extra lives pretty damn fast. Are you kidding oh, me? Oh, look at that. These, ah! I think it's coming out here. All right, all right, you got to get that guy behind me. All right, we got to show off some Uber Schizo. All right, yeah, let's jump out of here. All right, I'm gonna, I'm, so I'm going to bow out, and you're yeah, going to play. Yeah, let me, let me exit out here. Yeah, so the, the power-ups, we didn't get to see any of those, but uh, you'll actually you'll pick up a power-up. Let me bail out here. Okay. Uh, you'll actually pick up a power-up and drag it around with you. You don't actually get to use it until the other player also touches it at the same time. So you have to kind of come together on the board to uh, activate those power-ups. And we saw, what, a smart bomb that sort yeah, of... Yeah, there's the smart bomb. Uh, there's a, like a speed-up option. Uh, the coolest one that I've seen so far is this razor wire that actually makes like a wire between your two ships and you can like kind of enclose enemies in it and all that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so here's get Brad. Ready, get ready to laugh. All right. So Brad, what's 534 times Dude. 260? <laughs> you don't know? Uh, 42. I don't know. Okay. Well, that so was that, easy. That wasn't so bad. You made that look easy. That wasn't so bad. But Uber we'll see, we'll see where this goes. So we don't. So we don't have a release date, but it's going to be available on Xbox Live. Uh. Uh, Soon, we hope. Yeah. And we don't know anything about uh, Blaster or anything. I believe like it's that. early next year. Okay. And, uh, yeah, you, you, can, you can draw your own conclusions from the price of previous original content on yeah. Live Arcade. You know, probably somewhere around 800 points is not a far fetched uh, estimate there. I've been asked to wait until you die. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> probably, what, about two more? Uh, yeah. Uh, this uh, this uh, level, oh. you can handle this. I don't know, dude. I, I can, my eyes don't even go in two directions at once. You're right-handed, I guess. Uh, well, I just died, so I guess <laughs> we can move on now. Whoa. All right. So, uh, Schizoid coming uh, out soon. Yes. yes Xbox sure. Live. Yep. Appreciate it, Brad. Thanks for being cool. here. Thanks for having me. And now we're going to take a look at a, uh, a nice video that uh, our friend Tyler put together on an upcoming uh, dark game. It's got dark. It's got sectors. It's called Dark Sector. Check it out. Sure. I'm Steve Sinclair and I'm the project lead on Dark Sector. It's been a while since we, we first sort of sh tipped our hand and showed our cards. 
Uh, and that was really a ploy as we we're building our engine and our technology. We wanted to, you know, kind of grab some mind share and, uh, and start getting interest in the company and in the project and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, we continued to work on, our, on basically our tech demo. There was no gameplay there. And we changed it and we took, you know, the original Hayden concept and rather than a suit that he can take off when he goes to the bathroom, we started sort of putting it more in the character, making it more of a permanent sort of flaw in him. So he sort of has been there since the beginning, but it, we tried to make his powers and so on be sort of something that emanated from his body and that's where infection came from and so on and so forth. Well, what we tried to do was uh, uh, show Hayden before this infection happens and after. And so we kind of did a riff on Wizard of Oz there. So it's black and white uh, before the infection happens. And at the moment of infection, it has this cool kind of transition that goes into sort of, he's in the land of Oz kind of thing. So uh, there's a, a very uh, discernible difference between those two phases of him. And that's just a short sort of warm up period. You, you know, I have to learn cover and vaulting over and use the guns and that sort of thing. And then once you pass that point, that's when we give you the glaive and you have to sort of prove your competency with the glaive at that point. I guess uh, the most discernible difference the game has gone in the past six months in terms of the abilities and that sort of thing has been the dual wield. So we had for quite some time the glaive was just a weapon in your weapon selection and that really caused this problem of the balance between the guns and the glaive and the elegant solution for that is you fire your gun offhand once you uh, are in that, mo in that infected mode. So that's been the most significant thing is you can just have the uh, the other uh, trigger, whip your glaive out, and be at the same time shooting the guy down beside him. So that's pretty much, the, I would say, the most significant thing. It's helped the flow of the game so much better because we don't have this constant weapon switching back and forth anymore. The first scene in the game is showing you Lazarus in 1987. It's sort of when the, the Soviets kind of raised this sub and all hell was let loose, kind of Pandora's box style. And so Mesner was the one that was sent in uh, after that moment to investigate. And of course, you come in after he kind of goes off the grid, so to speak, and you have to sort of figure out what he's done. And of course, he's, uh, he's uh, taken it upon himself uh, to spread the love uh, and gone a little bit bonkers uh, in the interim. So uh, that's kind of what he's all about. And he's kind of the target that you're sent in to kill in the first place. And that's sort of the menace of the game is this guy. And he's sort of, very early on, he sort of gets in your head and he's kind of, although he's not, you know, present in that sense, he's, he's present, in, present in the sense that uh, he's in your head. Dark Sector is going to be out on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, late uh, first quarter, 2008. And there's a look at Dark Sector. Uh, I'm being joined now by Ricardo Torres, who has brought a friend by, Ken from Sega. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Good. Excellent. And uh, you guys brought a pretty cool game to check out, one that we used to play a long time ago on the, uh, the Sega Saturn. We did with that big 3D controller. Oh, yeah, yeah totally. Oh, that's right. It had its own little controller. Yeah. And everything. So, this is Knight's Journey of Dreams. Uh, Ken, tell us where this fits into like the Knight's continuity. Well, um, so after 11 years, we're finally bringing back Knight's. We're finally, you know, bringing back the franchise. Took you and long so, enough, but that's cool. <laughs> that's all right. And um, so we've got uh, the story takes place right after the first one. So, you know, Knight's has now moved on to um, we've got two new children. We've got uh, Will and Helen both who have completely independent storylines and um, you know you can choose to play again very similar to the original you can choose to play as either Will or as Helen and you can play as one you can play as both of them you know again each has their own independent storyline so you can you know if you just want to play as Will you can go ahead and play and get an absolutely full game experience if you want to play as Helen that's okay too or you can play as both of them and then we have some um, hidden you know features and unlockables that sort of give you an initiative to play as both of them and find out everything you can about the whole dream world of nights. Sweet let's talk we're playing. Hop in. Right. <laughs> we waited 11 years. You might as well see it, right? All right. So we've got um, a brand new level that we are debuting for the very first time right here on the spot. It's called the uh, Memory Forest here. So it is one of the levels that you will encounter as Helen in her storyline. And again, it's very, um, very similar to the you know classic knights, the the, game, the style of gameplay. Uh, we absolutely are in a three-dimensional world, but again, very similar to the original knights. Um, as you are completing certain objectives, you will go, um, think of it as like uh, switching train tracks. You know, you will explore certain parts of the level um, with one objective and certain parts of the level with uh, the next objective. So I can say I'm not very good at this particular section here, but I've got to, uh, you know, so make sure I can guys, get the uh, tune. How are you guys using the, the Wii remote for, for control? Because obviously the original game you had 
what, what used to be the biggest gaming oh, yeah. controller ever, the Sega's 3D controller for the Saturn. Well, when we thought about bringing Knights, you know, to the next generation of consoles and for the next generation of gamers, uh, we started thinking, you know, what made Knights, you know, great, um, you know, 11 years ago. And innovation was the biggest thing. And right now, you know, the Wii is a very innovative console, and it just offers us a way to bring flight um, in a very easy way to, to the next generation of gamers. So when we looked at just the Wiimote, you know, we figured, you know, what's the best way to do this? And again, we're offering, you know, several different control um, schemes so you can play as Knights. So if you're, you know, a really big fan of the GameCube controller, you can absolutely play and fly as Knights using the GameCube controller. If you're like me, who's like a little bit more of a classic gamer, I enjoy using the nunchuck, you know, because I enjoy the analog stick. But if you just want to use the Wiimote and absolutely just point at the screen and just, you know, allow Knights to fly in that capacity, it absolutely is available to you as a gamer. One of the cool things I remember about the old one is uh, I'd get little surprises on like holidays and stuff. They'd be like little one, winter wonderland, you know, Christmas style. Are you guys gonna pack in stuff or the by the internal clock gear system, it gives you some surprises? Well, we absolutely have some surprises here for nights. Uh, one of the big features that we have is something called the My Dream World. So as I go exploring the world as nights, um, I will be able to collect different. Uh, different features, different items, and I can place them in what's this living, breathing environment uh, called the My Dream. And so once it's there, the My Dream, what it does is it goes ahead and creates a, a world based on your gameplay style. And so that itself is linked um, to the Forecast Channel. So this is the very first game that's using the Forecast Channel. So if you're, for example, here in San Francisco and it's raining, it's going to be raining in your My Dream World. If you're up in Canada and it's snowing, it's going to be snowing in your My Dream World. And so we've also linked it up to holidays. So certain holidays you're going to have um, different surprises that you can go ahead and experience uh, with the Nightopians inside of your own dream world. And every dream world is going to be unique because it absolutely caters to things you found. Maybe you treat the Nightopians really, really well and they build like a fountain, a lake, a mountain, anything into it. It absolutely is a living, breathing environment. So do you want to fill folks in? Because the original game you were just going around collecting you know, collecting enough uh, those blue gems to, to open the gates, but now you're actually chasing a bird, right? Right, so the purpose of this particular mission is to go ahead and, you know, I gotta get the key from these three different birds to unlock what's called the Knight's Capture, which is the prison that Knights is um, traditionally uh, encased in. Once that's completed, I immediately will go to um, one of the boss levels. And if I don't wanna continue playing that particular dream, I don't have to anymore, you know, I can keep moving on to the next dream world. But if you want to go collecting all of the features, all the items that is in Knights, there are absolutely different missions available. Five for every dream world, and some of them are actually incredibly creative. So uh, one of the levels, you'll actually be in a desert where there'll be a theme park in there, and you'll notice that there's a roller coaster there. So one of the missions is actually Knights will transform into the roller coaster, and you can actually ride that roller coaster. Some of them you'll transform into a raft and go whitewater rafting. And we actually have something called Persona Masks that is um, a feature within Knights itself that will allow Knights to transform uh, into different creatures. For example, just on the fly here, we can transform into a dragon, a rocket ship, even a dolphin to access certain levels of the, um, of the world that you wouldn't be able to access otherwise. Very nice. Now, you mentioned that there's a, a bunch of unlockable content in the game. Can you, can you sort of give people uh, a hint as to how much and if there's anything familiar in the game, like, you know, stuff. Absolutely. I think that uh, fans of the original Knights are going to be very pleased with uh, some of the uh, hidden items and hidden unlockable features that we do have available. Um, again, one of the things that we do have is we have uh, a level that can be unlocked in here. And we also have um, certain features within the My Dream World themselves that can go ahead and be unlocked. Um, again, the My Dream will feature also, depending on what you go collecting and depending on how your gameplay style is, you can go talking to your friends uh, online. So I can go ahead and actually go into, if you have, um, if you've got your, you know, we're synced up as friends, you know, on the Me system, I can go ahead and jump right into your dream world, check it out. Uh, you can go ahead and jump into my dream world. We can even exchange different items. And so, you know, again, it encourages us to, you know, play maybe as a team, you know, like you'll go check these levels out, I'll check the other ones out, and we'll just go exchanging the items that we go finding. So, again, we do have a lot of unlockables for you to go ahead and, and explore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask, I think somebody said something about multiplayer stuff, right? Yes, we do. We have a two-player mode. Um, we have a race and a battle mode. And we've got the race mode is uh, available, so you can play with your friends and family, you know, in locally, or you know, using the Nintendo Wi-Fi, you can go ahead and um, 
go ahead and play with your friends and family all over the world. That's awesome. What about you? Yeah. I, I think I you think got I a Wiimote. See it. I think, yeah, I want to see the... Right. Well, yeah. you guys are getting this, the two-player set up. You got any questions over there, Kevin Van Orr? You guys have business works? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I have a lot of people um, wondering about classic controller support. For example, from Jeremy Mellinger in uh, Fairfield, Connecticut, um, wants to know, a lot of people want to know if uh, you're stuck with motion controls or if uh, there's any classic controller support. No, absolutely. Well, we have a very robust system for the controls, so you are not stuck with the motion control. If you you know you choose to play with the virtual uh, controller or the GameCube controller, you can absolutely go ahead and do that. Any more questions over there, Kevin? Um, looks like Christopher Nicholas in Birmingham, uh, Great Britain, wants to know if Sonic is unlockable. Ooh. I can go ahead and confirm that Sonic is not an unlockable uh, in Nights. Because he's totally available from the beginning, right? <laughs> you know? It's because he's going to be coming out another great game called Sonic Riders Zero Gravity. So we just want to make sure that you guys know, spot. we have their own spot for them. All right, that's cool. Excellent. You guys getting this two-player match over here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm on my pressing. Get your a? I got it. The a on. All right. So what we're going to see here is this the battle, is the race. So we're going to go ahead and see the race. Well, do you want to play Ricardo? Uh, you tell. Uh, How do you battle? Like the thought of the night dude fighting is crazy. There you go. Do do Pure Valley. Okay. Actually, well, never mind. Never mind. Yeah. Do the um. The other one has a roller coaster in it, doesn't it? Yeah. You want to play that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's go right into that. How, yeah. how, where are you guys getting this going? How does that battle system work? So the battle system works essentially that. Um, you're going to be knights, and you've got these enormous like boulders that you start hurling at each other, oh, wow. and so you get to fly absolutely in a um, you know three-dimensional space, 360 degrees, and you go capturing different boulders and such that you start flinging at each other. You know, so you just got to time that up. It's a, it's a lot of fun to play. It sounds like yeah, it. Definitely one of my favorites. It's, uh, I'm Riala, right? So you're going to be Riala, yeah. I believe mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yay. But this, however, ah. is the, the race we're checking out, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and steal these from, uh, from Ricardo. Do you have any other uh, questions totally waiting that. for us by any chance over there, Kevin? You know, a lot of people want to know about the music in the game. Uh -huh. um, they're wondering if any of the uh, tracks from the original have been remastered or make a reappearance in, uh, in this version. Um, <laughs> we'll have a little bit more about that particular feature um, in the future. Uh, we absolutely have uh, taken, they're all new songs, for example, when you start playing the game. Um, but we have definitely taken the, the, the style and, and definitely the, the tone of the original into this. So again, it does actually feel like a true sequel. Oh, excellent. Uh, I think we got time for a couple more questions. If you got any over there, Kevin? A lot of people want to know more about the, uh, the storyline. They want to know uh, exactly what the, uh, the concept is here and they want to know a little bit more about what's going on. Okay, sure. Uh, so the concept is um, Essentially, that you know, we have two different children this time around, and we have three stories. Essentially, you know, Knights is going through his particular storyline, through his um, battle with Rala and Wiseman, and then we have the children of Well, uh, Will and Helen, and they're going through their own different. Um, I want to call them growing pains. So, as the children go into their dream worlds, essentially, the dream worlds are kind of reflecting on the kids' nightmares and their anxieties about growing up and, you know, dealing with, you know, their parents at that particular age. So Knights essentially helps them overcome these fears and helps them essentially take that next step and, you know, so, sort of get to that point where they're comfortable again with their parents. And the kids, in turn, will help Knights through his particular dilemma and his storyline in defeating Wiseman, Reala, and uh, all the Nightmarens. So really, there's three different storylines going on. And they all kind of um, come, sort of, I don't want to say they combine, but they're definitely intertwined. Sounds awesome. I think we got time for one more question, Kevin. Excellent. Uh, it's like uh, Snook in Southern California and a few other people want to know um, how much free range motion there is and uh, how restricted they are in the, uh, on, on rails. Uh, there is a lot of free range motion, um, again, uh, it is going to be on rails, so as you go completing different um, uh, different objectives. The rails again will go ahead and will go changing. However, uh, once you go uh, into the different missions, you will have a little bit. It, the world is set up differently, so you have a different set of um, freedom. So you'll have to check it out. It really is a, a permission kind of thing. I got one last <laughs> question for folks that <coughs> that actually emailed me. Sure. Uh, so it, just in Japan, they announced that the, the original Knights is coming out on PS2. Right. 
So this is obviously coming out this year. Mm -hmm. Got anything to talk and tell us about? Uh, we will. Uh, we, I can definitely assure you right now that there are no plans to bring the original nights on the PS2. But check back with us next year, and you know we'll see what happens. January second. Excellent. Thanks so much for stopping by, Ken. Really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Mr. Ricardo Torres, Sorry. as always. And uh, right now, I'm going to kick it over to our good friend Kevin Van Ord, who you might have known snuck in there in place of Brian, all ninja style. Uh, Brian's not done. He's off to the side. He'll be back over here in a moment. But right now, it's Kevin, and he is standing by with our next set of guests. So go ahead, Kevin. Speaking of uh, Ninja Style, I'm here with David Luntz with Nunchuck Games, and we're going to be taking a look at Ninja Reflex today. Um, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about what we should expect to see from Ninja Reflex. Absolutely. Ninja Reflex is a game that's coming out in March 08 for both the Wii and the DS, and really the easiest way to describe it in a phrase is Wii Sports meets Martial Arts. Wii Sports has five sports games. Ninja Reflex has six martial arts games that are designed for you to master the art of speed with the hope of developing the reflexes of a ninja. So you start off the game as a white belt and you train in single player mode with your sensei who guides you throughout the game and as you earn belt ranks you hopefully one day make it to black belt and then there's a multiplayer aspect up to four players compete simultaneously for a ninja supremacy. Awesome. So actually, I think that you were going to show us a little bit about uh, yep. a little about the single player here and uh, the the six. Is it six mini games total? That uh, yeah, there's six core yeah. games. Okay. And then let me jump in here. The first thing you do is you enroll in your dojo by choosing what we call a ninja name. So a ninja name uh, is a combination of a first name and a last name that you can change your first or last individually, or you can hit shuffle. There are over 25,000 combinations available, and. Uh, some are funny, some are serious, depends whatever your tastes are. Say you like Wicked Fire, and you choose whether you're right or left-handed, and from then on, your sensei will call you, in this case, fire Son, throughout the game. So he knows all the ninja names and will call you by name once you choose your ninja name. So I'm gonna jump here just to show you the structure of the game. There are six core games, Shuriken, which is throwing star, Hashi, which means chopsticks in Japanese, Koi, Katana, which is samurai sword, Hotaru, which means Firefly, and Nunchaku, which are nunchucks. These are all things that you actually uh, translate into gameplay that you can do in real life. And you start off, again, in uh, single player as a white belt, and you progress all the way. I'm currently a first degree black belt. And so that's the, the structure of the single player game. Each of these six games has six variations. You unlock the variations as you progress in belt rank. So there's 36 game variations, six core games, and then in multiplayer, you'll see if you want to sign in, uh, we'll get, I guess, four people to sign in and uh, jump in here. And you'll see that the four games here, we'll start off with Shuriken. Uh, the way Shuriken works is you're in the center of a courtyard and you'll see ninja targets and geisha targets. What you want to do is you want to kill the ninja targets and you don't want to kill the geisha targets. So you'll do this by locking on to the targets with the B button and then doing a throw motion as though you were throwing a shuriken. And so you'll see the targets come up here, lock on, whoops, Oopsie. sorry about that. You do a throw and there you can see uh, your reaction times as well. Everything in this game is measured to the millisecond. And you'll see we can lock on to a target, more than one player can lock on to a target at the same time. Then it comes down to who does the throwing motion faster. The faster you throw, the faster the shuriken travels. And it's worth pointing out that we've actually got four people here uh, yep. in, in, the, in the game currently. Exactly, exactly. Kids. Yes, exactly. Right. You can throw sidearm or overhand, whichever style you prefer more. I'm a uh, sidearm ninja myself. That's true ninja style. Okay, and oh. if you lock onto a geisha, hit the A to unlock. You don't lose a point for killing geisha. I think we should get extra points for killing geishas. <laughs> we'll make a special build for you that does just right. that. Man, I, I... Watching you guys. From over here, it looks awesomely fun. Thank you. Oh, yeah. you can see. Okay, so Furious Demon won by one point. In the event of a tie, I just want to point out, ties don't exist in this game. It goes down to whoever has the faster average reaction. So you can win by a millisecond, literally. Now, I was actually red here, and I'd like to point out that when we played before we were on the air, I actually, actually won this particular game, so I don't want anybody to worry about my, my level of skill in throwing, in throwing shurikens here. Yeah, I know. You're doing very well for a first-time ninja. All right, so we're going to jump I'll, in. I would first-time ninja. First-time ninja, at least in this game. Uh, well, I don't point. see a black belt, but you'll get one one day. Um, okay, so Hotaro is very simple, but hard to master. You're going to wait and see uh, when a firefly appears. You want to hit the A button. 
But you want to hit as fast as you can, but you don't want to spam the button. If you hit one, when, hit A when there's no firefly, you lose a point. If you see right. a firefly that's in your color, okay, so I'm, I'm blue, you're red. Yes. Only get the ones in your color. If they don't have a color, it's a free-for-all. Anybody can get them. And you'll see our reaction time to the millisecond pop up every time you catch one. Oh, so that dig, <laughs> that means you whiffed, yeah. Hope. <laughs> this is actually a lot harder than it looks. Yep. Okay. It requires immense concentration. So have you actually seen an increase in your actual real life ninja skills yes. from playing this game? I guarantee you, when you play this game, you'll get faster. Of course, reflexes are not only key to martial artists trying to block a punch or duck a kick, but they're key to gamers. Uh, almost every game reflexes. All right, now look at that. Skill. Just look at that. That is All right, very good. Spicy fire with 14 points. There you go. <laughs> What about the one, the nunchuck? What do you do with that one? Ah, uh, the nunchuck, you actually swing a nunchuck the way if you, well, one of the things, when I grew up, my friends and I, we had shuriken, we had nunchucks. These are things yeah. that you could get. Totally. Now they're banned. You oh. literally cannot buy them anymore. And so part of this game was about giving players the ability to sort of feel in gameplay what it would be like to swing a nunchuck. And if you ever swung one, you know it's sort of a horizontal figure eight pattern, and you do that in, with the Wii remote, and you, uh, Commandeer a nunchuck, but uh, we're we're not ready to talk about that one yet. That's at a later oh. date. But oh, we're gonna end tease. up with uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, with oh, hashi. Great. So hashi again means chopsticks. You're gonna close the chopsticks by squeezing the A and B buttons together. When you grab a fly, you want to drag them to whichever bowl is spinning. And again, if you see a colored fly, you just want to grab your color. You lose a point if you put them in the bowl if it's not your color. So just let them go if it's not your color. Here we go. All right, so we got the red bowl spinning here. All right, this is easily for me the hardest one. I, I, I don't know that I can explain why that is. You ever tried catching a fly with chopsticks? Look at, I mean, look at this. <laughs> I mean, really. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There we go. I'm not even picking up the right color. I mean, this is really tough. And if you get the wrong color, just let them go. What's going on here? I guess I'm... Get a Wii remote. Yeah, I'm really not doing too well, as you can see. Somebody's battery's low. Why? Man. 15 seconds. <laughs> you know, I can barely manage with chopsticks to eat my sesame chicken. So, how you guys are managing to do that, I have no idea. Well, it does take practice, and I guarantee if you play the game, you will get faster. Your hand eye coordination will improve. Your response time to the millisecond, you can measure your progress. So you're saying this game can help me with my Counter-Strike game? Then I, I can guarantee you, especially with Shuriken, if you play first-person shooters, of which I play many, this game will increase your accuracy and your trigger time, guaranteed. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to test that out. That's cool. awesome. Excellent. And uh, when's the game coming out? game's coming out in March 2008, worldwide, the DS and the Wii. Excellent. Um, do we have time to take some questions? Yeah, please. Yeah, it looks like uh, we got a few questions here. Let's take a look and see what's uh, what's going on. Yeah, sorry, I'm not able to assist you with those questions. Yeah, no, <laughs> no worries at all. It's over there. I've, I've, I, as, as we can all see, I've got excellent multitasking skills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, Tommy Brown in uh, Plainfield, Illinois, wants to know how different the uh, six different variants are within each game. Yeah, they're 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 quite different. In multiplayer, what we do is the game combines the variations into the multiplayer game. So whenever you play a multiplayer game, like you just saw Hashi, it never plays the same way twice, first of all. Uh, secondly, uh, in the single player game, your focus uh, is on different things. So for example, one of the single player uh, Hashi games is focused on, on one fly, sort of like Mr. Miyagi, that is ultra fast. Okay, versus what you saw there, which was a total swarm of them that were color coded, which is, would be an example of a second game variation. So in the single player, it breaks down into those components and you unlock them as you increase in belt rank. In multiplayer, we combine them dynamically on a round by round basis so that you always get something different. Right. Um, and actually, it uh, looks like uh, 
Sam Hernandez in uh, some uh, city I can't pronounce in Texas okay. um, wants to know about uh, whether it's easy to lose your reticle and all of that. And uh, I actually can uh, point out that I never once had trouble um, locating my own reticle. The color, the shape was different for yeah. everybody. So. Yeah, the color and the shape are different. Yep. Excellent. Anything else? Um, Questions? Looks like that's about it. Looks like we're going to head over um, back to Ryan. Cool. David, thanks for your Thank time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And uh, thanks, Kevin, for that. And right now, I'm surprised we haven't shown it like 5,000 times during the show yet, you guys. But uh, Grand Theft Auto 4, there is a new trailer out there, and we're going to show it to you right now if you haven't seen it. Take it away. the dream. What do you mean? We're going to the top, Nico. Soon, even you will forget about the old country. What's up, money? <laughs> hey, Nico. <laughs> Good job, ladies. So, where are you taking me? <laughs> Bling, check. Bodies, check. Paper, check. That's how we roll. Where are you, Roman? Freaking out, man. I saw them! Don't be ridiculous, you're being paranoid. <laughs> so you're the guy who got jumped for a couple of minutes. Wake up! Who are you working for? I don't want to die, man, not like this! We must fight these people! It's them or us, cousin! Get out of my sight, or I'm killing you. Let him know. Mine is right. I told you to be calm, you hold it and jump! Welcome to America. Stop shooting people, you maniac! Leave my people alone! I ain't asking you, I'm telling you, do this! Are you in, big guy? We're gonna have to kill you. Well, since you put it that way, I mean. Grand Theft Auto 4, man. That was actually the first time I got a chance to see it today. That is awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. really yeah. cool. Yeah, give a trailer. And like, uh, I was asking you guys before it was halfway over, does anybody know that song? It's like, is that. Uh, do I don't know, know the what song? that is. On the spot at GameSpot.com. You know <laughs> it might just be, it to, might just be yeah, something totally. for the game. I mean, yeah, it might it not actually be. Yeah, be, yeah. yeah totally. I, uh, I'm a big fan of that already, though. Yeah, they know how to make a trailer. Those yeah, 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 yeah no totally. Doubt. And it's cool the way that you know that the first one looked hella good, and then they give you just so much more in this yeah, one. Yeah, they give like, you little teases. I want to know what's going on in these stories. I want to know who these guys are. There's yeah. a plot now. Yeah, There's actually yeah. a plot. Yeah. It looks all kinds of serious. Yeah, it feels feels like it's going to be awesome. I can't. Can't get here soon enough. Right on. When is when is it coming out now? Early they say in the spring. Year, I, I think yeah. they said spring. Right. Right, that's what I remember anyway. So uh, so that was a whole show. I mean, it was uh, a show, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We totally did a show. We totally <laughs> did a show. And uh, you guys, you know, it, it, hot spot next week, next Tuesday. Uh, tons of stuff. But uh, any final thoughts, you guys? Alex. Well said. As you yeah, that's about, that's about what I got. Sure. I'll say, uh, you know, it's been, a, as everyone has said, it's been a tough week. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're, we're here. We're not going anywhere. And uh, I will say that uh, one of the, you know, bright sides of this is great to see you here Thanks, on man. camera for On the Spot. It's been a while. Thanks. I missed you ha having you here. So thank you so much. Really. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you guys see me. I was a little rusty though, because like somebody was talking in the ear. I'm like, oh yeah, let me get to that. Yeah, I did that too. <laughs> I did that too. So all right. Well, thanks you guys so much for being here, and uh, thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, for for everybody that for everybody here at GameSpot, I'm Ryan McDonald, and we'll see you uh, next week in uh, all kinds of places. Right back here, certainly for on the spot. And uh, until then, thanks a lot for everybody for watching. Take it easy. <laughs>